But what's interesting about Matthew and Pat's situation, and Brendan's case, is what your rights are when it comes to shared ownership. So I've come to meet Paula Higgins from consumer group The Homeowners Alliance. Paula, thanks ever so much for coming along. I appreciate that. I'm trying to help somebody at the moment who's in a shared ownership scheme. Can you just give us a breakdown of exactly what that means and what do you think of them? I think shared ownership schemes are great for certain people. It's absolutely brilliant to help people get onto the property market if you cannot get enough deposit to buy or your income is too low to raise the money and you need to have a good credit history. Give me an idea of any pitfalls with these schemes. It's not a cheap way to get onto property. It's not a cheap way to make a fast buck on property. It's about giving people the chance to have a stake in property so they can get that share, but they will be paying rent on the, the other bit and it'll be, you know, this rent will go up and up and up. As far as the rent of the section they don't own is concerned, is that regulated? Is it capped? Is there any control over that? Or is it at the housing association's discretion to charge whatever they can get away with? There is a formula that they charge initially, and then they can go to uh, inflation plus 2% every year. So you have to remember that that rent could go up quite dramatically year on year. And as we've heard from Matthew and Pat, the rent isn't the only cost that people need to be aware of. They have to also remember that there's service charges involved and maintenance charges involved, and they become quite hefty and they can spiral out of control. Hmm, it seems all this is at the discretion of the housing association. With people in shared ownership, they can, can complain and consult, but they don't have the right to manage their own their own property. So their hands are all tied, aren't they, really? A lot more than they would be under a normal purchase. So it's important to know who will have to pay for any maintenance work that will need to be done. If somebody owns a percentage, let's say hypothetically 30%, and the housing association obviously own the other 70, if something needed doing that was going to cost some money, who pays the 100%? Is it you pay your 30 and the housing association pays 70, or are you, as the leaseholder, responsible for the lot? Unfortunately, that is exactly the case. So with service maintenance charges, you're responsible for 100%. If you're going to repair the roof, you're responsible for 100%, even though you have that 30% share. And unfortunately, people who are going into these shared ownership schemes do not realise that. So it is quite sort of a, a shock to the system. I'll say, it seems to me there are plenty of things that anyone thinking about shared ownership needs to carefully consider. Do your research, you know. I think the best thing to do is to talk to or find other people who are tenants or have a shared ownership in those housing associations, see what people are saying. The ones that are established are the ones that, you know, are generally professional and will help, help the people out. The big names. Do you know what, Paul? I think you've answered all my questions. Thanks ever so much. Yay. After that little chat about shared ownership, I think the expression that springs to mind is horses for courses. Some people it will suit, some it won't. And if you're interested in going down that avenue, make sure you do your homework first.